Okay, we're a mixed arable farm, comprising of about 2,000 hectares, or an old money 5,000 acres. Um, grow quite a broad range of crops, winter wheat being our largest crop. Um, just under 50% of the farm is down to winter wheat, hopefully. Um, we also grow all seed rape, uh, we grow brown mustard, um, we also grow peas, beans, uh, sugar beet, uh, spring barley um, and maize which is uh, for the local dairy. Uh, we do sublet odd fields out for potatoes as and when the fields come available and also one of the other crops that we actually grow here we treat our ELS and HLS or environmental stewardship as a crop as well. We try and grow our crops for the premium market. Nearly all the wheat is grown either for bread making, biscuit making, that type of thing. So a lot of it goes to Warbtons, but Vitis and into Weetabix. A peas, we grow for ADM at Long Sutton, they're human consumption. A lot of those go either to mushy peas or into canned soups. Um, the beans go as animal feed, um, but if we do lucky to get a premium on it, they can go for human consumption where they probably go to export to places like Egypt. A sugar beet in the rotation, uh, we grow for British sugar. We produce around about 13,000 tonnes of root yield here on the farm. Uh, where that goes off for processing at the Whissington factory. Uh, spring barley. Spring barley is another break crop that we've introduced to help control black grass on the farm um, because it's um, a spring crop that we can grow. It's got a very aggressive growing period so it can help sometimes smother the black grass out. So uh, good entry for all the mustard or all seed rape in the autumn. The reason we grow sort of the peas and the beans, they are a, a, a break crop but what they do, they actually fixate their own nitrogen. So when we put a winter wheat crop after them the following year, we can actually reduce the amount of man-made nitrogen we can apply to these fields. So, um, so they're not only important on rotation, but uh, they also put their own fertilizer back into the soil. So as you see, as you go around on the farm safari, you'll see we're a traditional fen farm. A lot of, a lot of our fields are surrounded by ditches. Um, we call them our uptown hedges. You go on the high country, they've got the hedges around the field, and the fens, we have the ditches around the field. And what we try and use with those, they're important for several features. One, for removing water from our fields, for drainage, but also they're good for the environment. If you look at the fields, each side has got a six metre grass margin. So we've got the ditch, which we mow annually each side, and then we've got a six metre margin either side of that. So what we're trying to create is some wildlife strips all the way through the farm like a network if you like, where your pred predation insects and mammals and birds can actually live and hopefully survive in these margins around the farm. We've got different features as well, we've done some capital works, we've created scrapes and um, trying to create some scrapes into our, our ditches, so they're like ponds if you like, but we've got control of those um, using the IDB and their water levels to maintain a winter and a summer level. Uh, we also have pollen and nectar strips across the farm. We have wild bird seed mixes. Um, if you can see in some of our winter wheat fields, we've got some little square areas. They're actually skylark plots. So there's different um, options that we can do across the farm to try and help the situation. And it's also a management tool as well. So here you'll probably see as you go around on the safari that we have some winter wheat that we actually got drilled at normal time in October. Um, looks quite well, looks a, a decent crop. Then also you'll see some stuff that we drill some spring wheat um, about middle of April into drying out soils that have been lifted after a late lifted sugar beet crop. And you'll see the difference in height and growth stages and you'll also see a big difference in yield at the end of the day when we come to harvest it. Okay, one of the other crops that we grow here on the farm is mustard or, or winter mustard. We actually sow this in the autumn now. Um, so luckily we got this sowing just before the weather broke in end of September and as you can see from here we've, we've got a pretty good looking crop of mustard here which will, will be harvested hopefully late Ju July early August. Uh, we'll take it into the farm store, we'll process it where we dry it and clean it ready for delivery off to uh, EMG factory near Norwich where they'll grind it and uh, make it into mustard flour ready to go into your Coleman's mustard and your jars that you'll see on the shelves in the supermarket.